In my opinion, topology tools are an essential part of a modern 3D application. And this is another area where Moto really excels. And we included our full topology tool set in Moto Steam Edition. Now, if you'll notice, I have a very high detailed object that I've modeled and I've sculpted through a couple different stages. And if you look down here in the lower right hand corner, I have 5.6 million polygons. That's a lot of detail. So what I need to do to make this an object that is ready for Dota 2 is retopologize it. That is build a new low resolution mesh on top of this object and topology tools automatically constrain new geometry that you create to a background object like the sickle. Now, one of the first things I need to do is I need to take all these different mesh layers um, and move them all into one single mesh layer and take into account the fact that like, for instance, these chains here are instances as well as this handle down here. So come into wireframe mode over here where it usually says advanced OpenGL, zoom out nice and far, hold down your rice mount button and lasso select everything in your scene make sure your texture locators aren't present and locators aren't present either and expand the group that is grayed out we don't want to actually select that so expand it and open it up until you get down to an actual mesh item that's visible right click on top of that change type mesh and this will change everything into a mesh item including the instances and it's already done um, so i'll change that back to advanced open gl Everything is a mesh item. Come into polygon component mode, press control C, and let's exit this whole group, add item mesh item for a new mesh item. Turn off that group and let's press, uh, well, actually, excuse me. I was about to paste it automatic, uh, immediately. Come down to your Catmull Clark subdivision level, set that to three, and also right at the bottom, make sure multi-resolution is toggled on. So now press control V and we will copy all our polygons from those separate layers into one single mesh layer. You can see it's lower resolution, but it's descriptive enough to do topology on top of. All right, so let's go ahead and add another item, a new mesh item, come over to our model quick access floating palette, click on our cube tool and just left click and drag out a plane that fully encompasses our object. It doesn't have to be perfect centered or anything. Just make sure it completely encompasses the item and press control C and we can come right back to the topo layer here and press control V and drop that plane into this mesh layer. And the reason why I'm doing this is because since this object has symmetry, all I want to do is topologize half of it. And so why not put a plane there in place to catch my, um, top, uh, my retopo tools and it, you'll see, it makes life a lot easier. Now that we have all of our items in a new mesh layer, let's rename that topo object so we can identify it. And let's come over to the topology layout and close down the modeling uh, quick access palette. Now things look a little bit funky right now. Come back to the item list, add item, mesh item, now the background objects are starting to sort of look in order. Um, here in the shader tree, I'm gonna turn on a material at the top because I've already started shading all the different components of this. And this material is overriding all the shading. And now we have uniform shading in the background uh, for the backdrop item. Now, since we have our empty mesh layer selected, I can come up to the topology pen, make sure you're in a component mode when you do this and zoom in down here, hold down the control key and left click and drag out. And I am now creating polygons. And you see why this is nice to have this plane in the background. Uh, this really allows me to be able to uh, fine tune and have a lot of control over how I am adjusting these polys. And the way you move things around, like you just saw me do, is as you hover over a polygon, an edge, or a vertice, um, those components are selected and that means that's what you'll be editing if you left click on top of that and then drag it around. And so really, really intuitive, love it. Um, now, if I hold down the shift key and I just left click and drag out, I can create new geometry. And I just created you know one single polygon right there. Um, also, if I hold down the shift key and middle click, um, this will allow me to slice through an edge when I select above a particular edge. So you see that slice that's going through there and now I've added more geometry that I can work with. I can grab that point right there and pull those into place. And so now I've got a basic base that I can work with. I can also hold down the shift key and right click, and that allows me to pull out a whole loop. In this case, it's just two polygons. 
but it's still a loop because you have those two edges right next to each other. And um, really makes life easy as far as being able to, you know, just rip right through setting up some basic topology. You're not worried that the points are out of place, things of that sort. And um, really quick, easy, and beautiful. And uh, all right, so I'll get up there to the shoulders and drag out some more polygons. I actually wanna do that one at a time now. Pull that vertex in right there and check this out. As I grab a, uh, an edge here and pull out a new poly, holding down the shift key and left clicking, as I bring it near the poly next to it, oh, I can't see, oh, there we go. It snaps into place. Now these vertices didn't weld because they could, could not see each other. Um, but if I just grab this, see that they snap together. And uh, if I do that one more time and make sure that the vertex is actually visible, there we go, so snap. You can see how vertices snap together and um, the top poly tools are slick. So it makes life very easy as far as quickly generating any sort of geometry that needs to be um, used to improve the quality of your mesh or to completely revamp it. Now we also have a lot of other tools. Um, first off, as far as the topology pen is concerned, you don't have to use these hotkeys like I'm describing. You can use the modes right here. We have all these different modes associated with the tool. It's like eight modeling tools like that are kind of merged into one that automatically have background constraints on it. So that's really what's going on here. Um, but we have other topology tools that are very much worth pointing out. And I'll go ahead and select our topo object Go to polygon mode, select that, hide the plane because now we don't want it. I wanna show you the contour tool. So let's come back to our topo layer. And so I'll name this retopo. And let's use the contour tool. Check this out, this is so slick. All right, so I'm just gonna come in over the blade and what I wanna do is I wanna retopo this whole blade very quickly and very easily. Make sure that you have uniform spans on. I usually, I'm setting it to 10 and fast slice. And all we have to do is left click and drag out and we get this nice line that is controllable, it's a handle. And as we release, it actually produces a curve that cuts across our object. You can see it even went so far as to come down onto uh, the rest of our mesh. But that's one of the nice things about it is it's very editable. You see, I can just grab these handles and start editing this curve um, that is forming the shape of my blade. And I can adjust the number of segments and things of that sort for it, which you know allows for greater precision. But 10 is just fine. And now I'll just hold down the shift key because like most modeling tools in Modo, we hold down the shift key, it lets you reuse the tool. So shift and drag out. And now I have another curve that I can work with. And so I'll go ahead and drop the tool, come to the bridge tool. And we have a new feature in our bridge tool for Modo in general um, when 701 came out. And that's called continuous bridge down here. We also have auto connection, which is super awesome. Um, but I'll go ahead and bridge these two loops right here. And you can see that it is automatically bridging between those loops I created. And I can increase the number of segments right here in between. And I probably, you know, since I want this to be low poly, I'll just maybe make two and um, I'll drop the tool. And I actually don't want symmetry on because I just want to uh, do one side. And so I'll select all the polys on uh, the other side and get rid of those. And now that we have those in place, I can continue using the topology pen and a couple things worth noting, like as you drag towards the outer boundary of a surface, according to your screen view, if you'll notice, it will catch along that edge. And so you can be very careless about how you start moving this geometry towards the edges and um, just use things like the contour tool in conjunction with the, uh, topology pen and you have a lot of control over how you are building out your mesh and uh, love the topology tools. Got so much wow factor with these. Now the tools go a lot deeper. These are all the tools that are available to you, standard modeling tools that automatically have background constraints enabled. And um, you definitely wanna check out more of those. And it's one of those situations where you just wanna get familiar with the tools and learn what to expect. Um, loops like these, get rid of them because I really don't need them. And you can see what a nice free flow process it is kind of developing your surface. Now, when you wanna check and see how much geometry you currently have, I'll just go ahead and select 
these uh, a poly there and a poly there. Press the right bracket, and that will select all connected polys since I only have those two groups. And right now, I only have 26 polygons uh, that I'm using. Um, but those are quads when it's in this view right here. When you select polys and it shows you how many are selected, those are quads. And quads are made up of two tries. So that means that according to the number of polys that are being asked for in Dota 2, I really have 52 polygons. So that's how you kind of keep track of how much geometry you currently have while you're building out your low re resolution model. All right, so when I'm done, I kind of end up with a topology such as this. Now, a couple things worth noting. Here on the left side, if I select some polys there and press the right bracket and tell it to select everything connected, if you notice, it only selects that half. And that's because as I mirrored it over, I told it not to weld vertices. So what you wanna do in this case is come back to the paint tab just so you can see this a little bit more clearly. Shift V or underneath the model quick access tab, uh, we can come up to duplicate for mirror. And we wanna make sure that it action axis is origin. So Alt W or action center right here. Click on the viewport, mirror that over. And here in the tool properties for the mirror generator, turn off, merge vertices. You can see the difference immediately. And the reason for this is we're gonna talk about UVs now.